Hello and welcome to today's YouTube video tutorial. Today we have an EW36 scooter by eWheels and we're going to show you how to take it apart almost all the way down to the nuts and bolts. The only thing we're not going to do is show you how to remove the motor, uh, how to change the wheels and how to adjust the brakes. We will put a separate video up that shows you how to change the wheels out and adjust the brakes, but in this video we're going to be showing you how to access all of the electrical components so that you can troubleshoot the EW36 if you have one. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is recline the seat all the way back as far as it can go and then lift up the armrests. You're going to use the ignition key to lift the seat up and access the storage compartment. If you don't have the seat tilted all the way back and the armrest flipped up, the seat won't tilt forward enough for you to access the screws and it'll make it difficult to remove the storage container which you'll have to remove. You will need an allen key head. You can use a manual allen key or a drill. It's a 3 16th allen key and just remove the six bolts that we're removing here. Two of them are going to have rubber grommets on them. Make sure you put those two in the right spot when you put it back together. Now it is a little difficult to do but you're going to need to remove the storage container. You can take the seat off first but if you don't want to do that you could just pry it up like we're showing you here. Uh, it is a little easier to remove the seat, but in this case, we're not doing that. We're going the other way around because a lot of customers just want to take it out without having to remove the seat to change the battery. So as you can see, once you pull it out, you're going to notice that the batteries are there all kind of wired up together. They are wired in series. It has four 12 volt batteries that are wired in series to provide 48 volts. So this is a 48 volt system. There is a bar which kind of keeps the batteries from shaking around too much. Those nuts and bolts on the left and the right side of the bar need to come out. So you may need a pair of pliers or you want to just pull up on the bar while unscrewing and the nuts will fall out underneath. Make sure you grab those nuts. You don't lose them. Maybe run it right through the bar when you remove the bar so that you know where they go when you're putting it back together again. So you can see that one of the screws just fell out and I'm actually going to grab the screw and the nut and just connect them right through the bar so that we don't lose them. And that's something you should do if you're taking apart the scooter so that you know exactly where each bolt and each nut goes when you're putting it back together. Now it is a little difficult to remove the screws that are tucked in in the back, the red terminal screws, because the angle for the screwdriver or the drill to reach in there is just kind of awkward. So we actually had to remove the battery slightly, kind of pick it up and stick it up on the higher part of the battery compartment so we can have a little bit more accessibility to that red terminal screw. So there's really nothing to it here. It's a Phillips head terminal screw. So just go ahead and unscrew each of the connections one at a time, being careful not to let anything uh, bridge or cause a spark. You should also turn off the circuit breaker before doing this, which is in the storage compartment. There's a little blue switch. And if you turn that off, you're going to prevent any short circuits from happening. So once you have the battery compartment out, you're going to notice one of the red wires is still connected to that breaker switch we were just talking about. So you'll want to find out which wire it is that's plugged into the left side of that circuit breaker switch. You are going to need to remove that red wire from the breaker switch on the left side as shown here. You just need a Phillips head screwdriver or drill bit. And if you just unscrew it counterclockwise, it will let that wire just fish right out. So go ahead and pull that wire out. And now you have the storage compartment completely free. You are going to need a socket, a 3 8 socket to remove the seat, as well as another Allen key that you can use to remove the nut and the bolt on both sides. There is a washer in between the brackets for the seat on each bracket. So just follow along here with the video. Get your Allen key drill bit on the right side and use the socket on the left and just go ahead and unscrew. Just be careful that you don't lose the washer when it falls out and make sure to put everything aside in a way that you'll know exactly where everything belongs when you're putting the scooter back together. So we just remove the right side, grab the washer, making sure to take the bolt out and the nut so that we don't lose it. And we dropped it, which is okay. It happens. Don't be uh, surprised if one of your bolts fall. Um, and we're just rinsing and repeating on the left side bracket. Once the two bolts and the nuts are removed and the washer's out of the way, all you have to do is just apply a little bit of force upwards and pick up the seat. And that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to pick the seat up a little bit so that the bolt can come out easily. And now that the bolt is out, 
of the bracket, we can just pick the entire seat straight up and put it to the side. So now we're gonna remove the rear body panel. There are a set of four screws on the rear side. So you've got the first one here on the right side and then two on the rear right above the anti-tip wheels. So make sure you grab those two and then the fourth screw is on the left side above the left wheel. Lastly, we're just removing that left screw above the left wheel. Now that all four screws are removed, we're gonna have to move towards the floorboard area. First, you wanna remove the mat. So we're just gonna remove the back two screws holding the mat down on the floorboard and remove the screws that are underneath that mat. You actually have to remove all of the screws underneath the mat, and we're gonna do that here. Pay attention to the silver clips. We're gonna point those out in just a second, but the silver clips that you're gonna see are actually there so that the screws have something to bite onto. Um, otherwise, the threading of the screws won't have anything to catch onto other than the plastic paneling, which is what the body is made out of, and the screws won't grip onto that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the floor mat entirely and then start to remove all of the screws on the floorboard one at a time. There's a total of 10, 11, 12 screws on the floorboard. So make sure you take them all out and again, pay attention to where each screw goes when you're putting it back together. Now we're just prying out the floorboard. You're gonna have to pick up from the bottom and kind of wedge it outwards. And then you should be able to release the body panel, but you will need to disconnect the charging cable clip and the rear lights, uh, which are the turn signal lights and the running lights. There's just a set of three harness connectors. Just make sure you pay attention to the colors and disconnect them all. You also have the key cable that is used to open the trunk storage space. You'll wanna disconnect that as well. Then you can just remove the body panel altogether. Now we're gonna start removing the screws on the back side of the steering column, which is right in front of you when you're sitting down. There's a total of 12 screws that you'll wanna take out one at a time and just, again, pay attention to where each one goes so that you can put them all back in the same order when you're done. So we're just simply taking our time to remove each one and now moving towards the front of the scooter, there are some screws here that you can see on the right and the left side above the front wheel, which you'll have to remove as well. Once all of those screws are removed, you're gonna notice that the body panel for the floorboard is now loose. You will need to unclip it. There are some clips that hold the top part of the front shroud to the bottom. And once you have it unclipped, it should come out all the way. You will need to lift the front of the scooter, the front wheel, to get that panel to come out from underneath the scooter. There's no way to really get it without lifting the front wheel up. So you see all the clips, they do have to slide out completely to be clear and free. And the top and the bottom part here that we're working with do disconnect. There's some clips that are just used to kind of hold it in place. And again, once you have it completely loose and on the floor, you can just pick the front wheel up, move it to the side. And now that bottom panel that goes underneath the floorboard or on the right and the left side of the floorboard, I should say, uh, is completely free. Now, one of those clips that I was mentioning fell out and that might happen to you. So just be careful and kind of pay attention to where they belong. There are two lines on one side of the silver clip. Those two lines need to be facing up when you put the clips back in if they fall out. Now there is one other screw that you'll need to take care of and it's inside of the storage compartment that is right underneath the steering column. So just open up that storage compartment, unhinge the little hinges that keep it from falling all the way down so you have more room and unscrew that main screw. Now you're gonna notice on the front, the two body panels actually come apart. It's not one main panel. So if you pay attention to what we're pointing out here, you can see the clip and how we are able to unclip it. There's some little hook style clips that you just kind of have to pop out carefully. And it really helps to see how it looks here before taking it apart. So you know exactly what direction to pull it in. You kind of have to tilt downwards and out. And once you remove that front piece that we just took out, there is a hidden screw that you'll need to take out. And that hidden screw will allow you to take out the bottom part of the front body panel. Now the turn signal lights are connected just like in the rear. There's two clips for the turn signals in the front and you'll need to disconnect those. Pay attention to the wire coloring so you know which side the right turn signal and left turn signal connect to when you're putting it all back together. 
And we're getting pretty far along here. Now we're gonna to start to work on the dash. You can take off the speed control knob. There is a little flat head screw that holds it on if it's too tight. If you feel like you can't take it off, you'll wanna just use that little flat head screwdriver to loosen that knob that we just removed. And then use your Phillips head screwdriver to take out all of the screws that are facing the seat on the backside of the steering assembly. And we're showing you that here. We're just taking out each screw one at a time. There's one big screw in the middle that you'll have to take care of. And then uh, there is a nut which is attached to the base of the speed control knob. It's a little module that's used to adjust the speed. And just maybe use a socket or a pair of needle nose pliers to loosen up that nut. And once you take that nut out, you'll be able to lift up the little plate that has the numbers for the miles per hour. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is just remove the mirrors one at a time. Really nothing to it, just twist them counterclockwise to get them out of the way. Now we didn't notice, but in the front of the scooter, right underneath the front headlight, there is another big machine style screw there that you need to remove in order for the front panel to come out completely. And of course, with the headlight being there, there's a clip that's used for the headlight. In fact, all of the components use clips for the most part. And if you just kind of pay attention to each component and where the wires come from, you can kind of fish the wires all the way back to the clip. So replacing parts is not too difficult. Now there are two screws on the left and the right side of the console display, which you'll want to remove in order for you to release the console part that's on the rear with the digital display. So we're doing that now, but we noticed it was kind of hard to get to that right screw or the left if you're sitting in the scooter. So we used a manual screwdriver instead of a drill, which could strip the screws. A lot of these screws are very easy to strip. So if you find that you're having a hard time with a drill, we recommend switching to a manual screwdriver instead. And here we're just showing you all of the different connectors. These connectors are all basically wiring to different components such as the speed control knob, the light switch, the turn signal switches, the actual display dash, all of these components have their own set of wires that at some point will meet a connection clip. So if you need to replace a part, you basically just need to find the wires that come from that part, such as the console display or the light switches, turn signal switches, the horn switch, they all have clips. Now, some of the components have a removable clip right where the component is, and others don't. They just have wires going into the component that you cannot unclip. But if you follow those wires down into the main part of the steering console, you'll see there's probably a male and a female clip. And the wires just run all the way down to the bottom of the scooter, under the floorboard, and then at the end, towards the rear, they're going to meet near the controller, which is that silver thing that you see behind the bag that we're showing you here. Now, one thing about this scooter, all of the components that are near the controller are just wrapped in a Ziploc bag, which is not the best. Let's just leave it at that. So when you're looking at replacing a piece like the ignition or the speed control knob, again, just follow the wires and find out where that clip is. A lot of the times you'll notice that certain clips are malfunctioning or damaged, you'll see that sometimes the wires come right out of the clip. And if that happens, you need to just replace the clip or solder the wires together and get rid of the clip. These are some of the most common ways that we will repair a scooter. We'll first check the connections and make sure that the wires are not coming out of the clips. And it does happen quite a bit. For example, on the tail lights, sometimes the wire comes right out of the tail light assembly or at the clip the wire will become dislodged from the clip. So here we're showing you the ignition, which again has a clip, but the wires seem to be intact. Uh, one thing that we didn't do was remove the bottom shroud, the wheel fender, because you have to actually take the wheel out. And we wanted to save that for a separate video that shows you how to replace the wheels, but it's pretty straightforward. There's just a big nut and a bolt. So if you remove that, the wheel should come straight out. And then you can remove the three screws holding in that red fender or whatever color scooter you may have. That front wheel fender would come straight out. Now, we wanted to show you the braking cables that run underneath the scooter frame. And some of the wires do run underneath the scooter frame as well from the steering assembly all the way to the back where the controller is. The scooter does have a couple of other nuts and bolts that you can detach if you wanted to break down the frame but breaking down the frame is usually not necessary. As you can see, it does have suspension. These shocks are adjustable, and there is a speaker in the back. 
Uh, there's also a little receiver for the key fob, which is remote control kind of wireless. So you'll notice all of those different components kind of there next to the not so pretty Ziploc bag that houses everything. Uh, and if you wanted to troubleshoot or replace a controller, that we do recommend hiring a technician because it's not easy. There's a lot of connections involved when you replace a controller. But essentially, just if you pay attention to the wires when you're taking it apart and put it back together, you should be fine. That's going to conclude this breakdown video. Before you go, please don't forget to visit our website, mobilitydirect.com, and click on the green button that says free catalog to claim your very own free catalog. Just fill out the short form and it should get to you in about a week or two max. I just want to take this time to personally thank each and every one of you for watching this video. We couldn't do it without our subscribers. So if you like our content, please go to YouTube, search for Mobility Direct, and subscribe to our channel. You can enable notifications. That way you'll get notified whenever we release new videos. We're constantly making great videos. We have tons of playlists that range from repair videos, unboxing videos, research and development, and much, much more. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and ask any questions in the comment section below. We love hearing from our audience, whether it's feedback, comments, or suggestions for a new video topic. We love hearing from you. None of this could be done without our loyal audience. We hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching again. Have a great day.